let's talk about AWS certifications. Do employers care about them? What order should you get them in? Should you get all of them? The answer to these questions are a lot more nuanced than most people make them out to be. Let's get right into it. Now, before we start, I can already hear you asking the question, who are you and why should we listen to you? My name is Fayomi. I'm a senior solutions architect with over six years of experience working in the cloud. I have over nine AWS certifications, and so I'm in a really good position to let you know how getting certifications influences your career prospects. If you're excited to learn more about AWS certifications, then smash that like button and subscribe if you're new. Let's get right into it. The first certification we're going to talk about is probably the easiest one you will ever do. You need to take this certification if you're brand new to cloud concepts and want to have a high level general understanding of how the cloud works and what the main services are. I am of course talking about the cloud practitioner certification. It's the easiest because it doesn't really test your technical skills, but more of your high level understanding of cloud services and terminology. This is a great certification to get if you're switching from a different industry into the cloud, I want to get your head around how the cloud works at a very high level. The exam currently costs $100 and you're given about 90 minutes to complete the exam. Once you pass the cloud practitioner certification, the next cert I'm recommending is one that gives you deeper understanding of the technical components of the cloud. This will begin helping you to hone your technical skills on cloud fundamental technologies like compute, storage, networking, security, and more. If you haven't guessed it already, I'm referring to the Solutions Architect Associate Certification. By studying this certification, you learn the basics of how to design an AWS architecture based on business needs and requirements, how to design architectures that are secure, scalable, and cost optimized, and how to review architecture that already exists to provide improvements and recommendations. You will also learn about the AWS Well-Architected Framework, which is a vital framework to learn if you want to become a solutions architect in the future. This is an excellent certification to deepen your knowledge on AWS and build the vital skills you need in the job industry. It currently costs about $150 to sit and you're given roughly 130 minutes to complete the certification. Okay, before we proceed, I have a quick disclaimer for you. If your goal is to get a job in the cloud industry and you've already done the cloud practitioner certification as well as the solutions architect associate certification, then I recommend you take a break from certifications and focus on doing activities that will improve your chances of getting a cloud job. Some of these activities include building high quality cloud projects, learning how to write a resume that stands out to recruiters, learning how to interview in a way that impresses hiring managers. These are the key things you need to do to get a cloud job. So if you've already got those two certifications, focus on doing those. And if you need help on how to do all of those, why not check out cloudcareermentor.com where I've designed a complete curriculum that gives you those high quality cloud projects you need to have, as well as all the help you need to build the skills to break into the cloud industry. Check out cloudcareermentor.com. Again, certifications can only get you so far, so make sure you're building those real projects. Are you interested in getting your first cloud job? If you answered yes, then I have a free guide just for you. This free guide walks you through a proven step-by-step -step process to help you get that first cloud job. It walks you through the three simple steps you can take today to make yourself highly employable. The link is in the description below, so make sure you download it now if you're interested. All right, let's get back to the show. The next certification that I'm going to recommend is aimed at people who want to take advantage of the developer tools that AWS has to offer. That's right, you guessed it. I'm recommending the Developer Associate Certification. Now, even though this certification is aimed at people who want to take on more of a developer role or who might have more of a developer background, I still recommend it even if you're not a developer because working in the cloud as a DevOps or cloud engineer involves interacting with developers. And so by taking this certification, it gives you the language in which to talk to developers, even if your background isn't from development. When you study for the developer certification, some of what you learn include 
how to develop and optimize applications on AWS, how to package and deploy applications using CI CD workflows, how to secure your code and data, and how to identify and fix issues with applications running in the cloud. It costs about $150 to take the exam and you're given 130 minutes to complete it. Now that you've completed the developer associate certification, Time to move on to something a bit more challenging. This is of course the SysOps Associate Certification. Now, I personally think the SysOps is more challenging than the developer, which is why I encourage you to do it after the developer, because I believe with these certifications, it's always better to move up in dif in difficulty slowly rather than massive leaps in difficulty. When you study for the SysOp certification, some of what you learn include implementing logging and monitoring on your infrastructure and applications, troubleshooting issues, implementing architectural requirements such as security, scalability, and reliability, implementing disaster recovery and business continuity processes, and just generally supporting workloads based on the well-architected framework. It costs about $150 to sit this exam and you're given 130 minutes to complete it. As a general rule of thumb, you want to complete all the associate certifications before attempting the professional or specialty certifications. This is because there's a huge leap in difficulty between the associate certifications and the professional certifications. And again, I'd recommend you have at least a year of real world work experience before even attempting the professional certifications. That being said, the first professional certification I'd like you to attempt is one that enables you to deep dive into implementing technical cloud concepts. This certification is of course the DevOps Engineer Professional Certification. By studying for this, you gain a deeper insight into how to implement and manage CI CD methodologies in AWS, how to configure and automate security controls and governance processes, how to identify and deploy login, monitoring and alerting systems on AWS, how to implement systems that are highly secure, scalable and available in AWS. It costs roughly $300 and you're given 180 minutes to complete this exam. The reason I recommend going for the DevOps Professional Certification before the Solutions Architect Professional Certification is because I think it's important to have deep understanding of implementing cloud technologies before learning how to architect them. The reason is, once you know how to implement complex cloud technologies, you learn about all the nuances, where the traps are, what's more difficult than it looks. And by understanding how to implement solutions effectively, it will help you when you start to actually architect these solutions. And so by having a strong grasp of implementations, it will make you a better solutions architect. Speaking of which, now that you've successfully passed the DevOps Engineer Professional Certification, now you can move on to the Solutions Architect Professional Certification. While the Solutions Architect Associate Certification tests your understanding at a relatively high level, the Solutions Architect Professional goes a lot deeper. With a professional certification, for a lot of the questions, multiple answers could be the right one. So you have to make sure you really read the question, really understand what the question is looking for. So for example, is the solution centered on costs or security? And by understanding the deep nuance of the requirements, that's how you'd be able to answer those questions correctly. So it's definitely what to pay attention to when you sit this certification. When you study for the Solutions Architect Professional Certifications, some of what you learn include how to design your architecture for organizational nuance and complexity, how to continuously improve existing solutions, how to handle complex cloud migrations and modernization. It costs about $300 to set and you're given 180 minutes to complete the exam. Once you've completed these five core certifications, I want you to stop, take a break, congratulate yourself because it's not easy to get these five certifications. The next step then is to now start getting the specialty certifications. Now these certifications are very self-explanatory. You know, the clue is in the name. If you want to focus on security, go for the security specialty certification. If you want to focus on networking, go for the networking specification and so on and so on. And the next specialty certification should be focused on the industry that you want to specialize in. Now time for the million dollar questions. 
Should you get all the certifications? Personally, I think it's cool to get them all because you know you learn more about the AWS ecosystem. Plus, AWS sends you a sweet jacket once you get all of them and you'll be part of an exclusive club because there's not a lot of people who have all the AWS certifications. But you might also find that after you've done a number of the certifications, you want to focus on some other skills that might be more important in your career, like how to program, how to communicate effectively, how to write documentations, project management. You might find that as you become more senior in your industry, these other softer skills become more important to your progression. Now remember, all the advice in this video is based on my experience and the experience of those around me. There is no right or wrong way to do this. You do what's right for you. These are just things that I've seen work for me and work for other people as well. Now I've noticed a lot of people who are looking to break into the cloud industries make a lot of common mistakes and these mistakes hold them back from getting their first cloud job. Now, if you want to know what those mistakes are so you can stop yourself from making those, check out this video, click it now. It's really good. I'll see you in the next one.